Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. I just want to say that before we go into our uh, our guest this evening, I just my I just want to um, give you an update that please, uh, this is a live show, so um, our guests are joining us live, and so you can ask us questions. Uh, please comment as you always do. But without further I'm joined by two ladies today, which is quite exciting. You know, uh, it's 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 a table of women, and it's always great to get women in the agricultural space. And uh, today we are joined by Marty Conradi, as well as Marsha LaRue, who's coming back the second time on the podcast. And uh, Marty is the medical advisor at Agility Agri. And Marsha is the sales executive at Agil- Agility Agri. Um, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know, Marsha, we've had you on the show before, but um, just maybe to uh, start again, just by your introduction and what is it that you do for Agility Agri? And then Marty, uh, as well, you can tell us about your position and your role within uh, Agility Agri. Thanks, Mbali. And it is such a pleasure to be back with you and the audience And I'm sure we're going to have such a fantastic discussion leading up to the first one that we've had. And I mean, it's a pending topic as always. So just as a reintroduction, I am Marcia LaRue. I'm the sales executive at Agility Agri. And my main purpose, definitely, and especially for this audience, is to assist our our audience, should it be from an individual or a group perspective, with the right decisions to make when it comes to healthcare, and especially what we're talking about today, employee well-being. Awesome. Marty? Yes, um, so I'm the medical advisor um, at Agility Agri. Um, So what I do is kind of more behind the scenes um, and we try to make sure that we develop a product that really looks after the employee's health. So to make sure that all the elements are there um, and then also for all of the um, other health products that Agility manages, I'm just the medical advisor there. Oh, wow. Awesome. And Marty, I'm sure your role right now is quite uh, overwhelming because like we're saying um, just before we started the podcast that, you know, a lot of people are getting sick, they're having the flu and they're testing negative for COVID. And it seems like everybody's now getting sick with, you know, um, unexplained illnesses or, you know, the typical illnesses um, that we, we would usually get during this time around, not specifically COVID, because the minute a person coughs, Everybody thinks it's COVID. So you <laughs> yes. must be busy this time round. <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite it's quite busy. Um, so, but yeah, people always get sick. Um, but we are fully there to help. Awesome. So, for anyone watching the podcast tonight, and maybe just might think they do have an understanding of what employee wellness programs are, but maybe just unpack it to us in terms from an agility agri perspective. What are first and foremost, first and foremost uh, employee wellness pro- programs? Um, so employee wellness programs um, is actually a um, combined uh, program that consists a little bit about um, health promotion. Um, so that is, you know, when an employer makes a point of promoting health, uh, you know, wash your hand posters or that type of just health promotion, um, how important it is to wear your PPE or all of that. Then there's also the component of well-being, um, more the wellness uh, offerings. So when you have your wellness days or when you do a HIV testing campaign or a mental health program, um, that type of more uh, um, evaluating the people and um, uh, ascertaining their health. And then there is the last component, which is more employee assistance programs. Um, So that also offers um, so much more to an employee uh, where you can really assist him. So once you've identified a program, you can actually offer him um, whether it is helplines. um, So what Agility offers is we've got a nurse helpline, which just answers a little bit of clinical questions you might have or a financial helpline because often we underestimate the effect that financial problems could have 
on your mental well-being and even your physical well-being. Um, and then there's also the legal helplines, which is just offering that little bit of extra advice you might not know you need. Um, and, you know, there's always the, the mental type of support that you can get through what is often referred to as a so psychosocial helpline. Um, mm -hmm. And then some companies also offer some rehab rehabilitation if they do identify that maybe a lot of employees are struggling with um, alcohol dependency or that type of situation. So the combined, you know, when you combine all of those products, you kind of get to an employee wellness program as a whole. Wow. And uh, I want to bring in Marsha here into the conversation to ask basically, um, because you are agility agri and you are focusing on a specific niche or segment in the market, which is that being agri, um, how different is the employee wellness programs that agility offers, agility agri offers to its client as opposed to normal employee wellness programs? Well, yeah, I think the key here is, um, you know, the uniqueness of our, our members and then obviously, especially the agri-industry. So one gets quite a lot of options out in the market to identify what you as an employer would like to do in terms of an employee wellbeing program, be it, as Dr. Marty said, a financial aspect, legal aspect, a health aspect, um, or maybe risk management um, from an employer perspective for their return on investment. So what makes Agility Agri um, different in this market is the way and the methodology we take and put together in order to create the right solution when it comes to employee well-being. Um, we spoke previously about locations, demographics. You know, farms are not always located near metropolitan areas. So how does one provide a service to employees to better their own in a personal lifestyle and as an employee, but being so far removed from the city life. So that's where the, the absolute focus comes in to say, all right, these are the providers in that location that we can access. Employee well-being from an agility perspective, for instance, we have one of our products actually complementary to any employer group that belongs to agility and also our medical aid health squared, which we administrate. So that means we can already give one aspect a tick. And I hate the word ticking a box because it's it, it's more than that. You know, yeah. HR lots of times have this onus on them to say, but you know what, we have to look after employees. What, what can we do? All right, we've put this in place, but does it actually, is it being utilized? How can we measure the outcome of this benefit that you are giving as an employer? So from Agility's perspective, for our employer groups, and especially um, on the farms, we have a helpline, a 24-7 helpline, which these employees can access for either health financial or legal assistance, which is fantastic because this is, you know, and, and things never happen in working hours, especially when it comes to health. It is late at night. Um, something happens to my child and I'm not sure how to respond to that. And it's just that quick call to a professional to say, this is the situation. What is your advice? So it's become very, very, very crucial and nearly like gold for our employers at the moment because the employees feel a sense of duty that's coming from the employer to take care of them and giving them a, a, an access to a professional that is not linked to the organization. You know, we we're proud and as South Africans we have a sense of culture that we don't always want to let people know our weakness or when we are actually experiencing something difficult like a financial or legal um, situation and especially with COVID you, you're so scared you just wipe your nose or sneeze um, because the, the individuals around you might think that you've got COVID and you can then as a stigma think that you could lose your job. So this is yeah. an absolute yeah. channel that is private. It is absolutely um, free and the employee doesn't have to worry about the advice that they're getting and that it will be shared somewhere else that could potentially be threatening to them. 
Wow, thank you. Uh, Marty, I want to know, at what point do companies um, feel that they need an employee wellness day? Like, what are the signs that uh, they should pick, maybe they should look out for to say that, okay, maybe we should start organizing an employee wellness day. So what are, at what point do companies uh, implement or start to uh, introduce employee wellness days? So yes, employee wellness days is not the, um, it's not the solution to everything, but it is a very good starting point. Um, so it actually shouldn't be triggered by anything. Um, it, it, it will be best if it is just done before there are any problems. You know, that is the ideal. And that is what is often offered if you go to an external company like Agility to bring in people and arrange a day um, before there are any triggers. Um, and, you know, what then can happen is from that day, you can determine the need for either future wellness days or so. Um, but your unfortunately mm -hmm. reality is that often uh, first the people become a bit sick, uh, regular sick leave. Um, also, one of the signs that companies have to look out for is when they know that the stress levels are high of employees, um, mental well-being in the workplace is becoming a very you know, major topic in the industry of um, occupational health. Um, so often at wellness days, we thought, okay, high blood pressure testing, done, you know, cholesterol check, weight check, a little bit of lifestyle advice. That used to be a wellness day. Nowadays, a wellness day is a little bit more specialized, um, you know, mental health services or education or just support of people. Um, that is becoming a little bit more important and creating awareness also of workplaces of what the stress levels is. So, yeah, um, we hope to change and get more wellness days out there. Mm. You spoke about productivity. So does this mean that basically, you know, for farm managers or farm owners or just anyone in management, if they start also, you mentioned obviously that we shouldn't wait for triggers, right? But just yes. from a productivity perspective, um, anybody in management, uh, even if when, sh when they start seeing signs of their team underperforming and uh, it's not necessarily any, ha has anything to do with their physical strength or, you know, how fast they could do stuff on the farm. But just basically when people start noticing that, ah, this certain or, or this team is really not mentally at work, you know, they're yeah. physically at work, but they're not mentally at work. Maybe they're not communicating properly with their uh, team members. They're just forgetting small tasks. Are those also maybe just some of the signs to say, okay, um, I think the team is in a down mood. Um, you know, and I mean, we are in a global pandemic. A lot of people are being yes. affected by a number of things. And so could it be that even when we spot these type of signs, is it safe to say that a, a wellness day is due? Definitely. Um, so, I mean, those are the starting signs of burnout. Um, yes. It definitely indicates um, stress levels in your employees. And the problem is... One employee who is very stressed or anxious um, w for whatever reason will affect the others around them. Um, so it is, you know, it is not just a single employee who might need help. Um, it is probably of the whole group of the employees. So those are definitely signs to watch out for, you know, decreased productivity and all of that. Um, but like I also just mentioned, wellness days, um, it is a good trigger to, you know, then arrange a wellness day, um, but then to also make sure that the wellness day focus on the specific problems. Um, and it's also at that point where you can immediately start with a little bit of health education um, to the people or just um, enabling them to deal with the issue even before a wellness day is arranged. So, you know, just telling your employees about helplines that's available. Um, you know, there are employee wellness um, uh, companies who offer these services, but there are also free helplines, um, you know, out there. So just educating your employees in that situation and then also arranging a wellness day is definitely good. Great. And this question goes to both of you ladies, and especially I'm sure Marcia, because Marcia, because you're the one that uh, engages directly with the uh, with the clients. So basically, how does Agility Agri implement 
uh, these wellness programs on farms and basically what really happens uh, in the wellness day because like you said Marty it's not really checking blood pressure you know or um, um, you know the weight and this and, and, the, and the height of the person anymore it goes into much deeper level than that does it maybe also involve just is it like people just sitting around a circle and talking about their problems like therapy? Firstly, how are they implemented? And uh, what, yeah, just basically give us a scenario of how you conduct the wellness day. It's a, it's a very good question. And it's like Marty says, you know, it's, it's not the end all and be all, but it can definitely mitigate quite a lot of risk factors that's been identified. So typically with um, a scenario um, with a group, for instance, what we do is we keep a, a reporting mechanism, which is a risk management tool that we use in terms of claim histories for the group. So for instance, if we identify that it, there's been an influx on specific doctor visits or claims for specific medication. So this will always be a generic overview, never from an individual um, perspective, but one gets a very good idea what the trend would be in the company and what their staff are going through. So for um, a one instance that I'm dealing with now and um, actually a wellness day and employee wellbeing program that I'm, I'm initiating at one of my employer groups was we saw a massive, massive trend for um, on the claims history of these employees that were on the medical scheme for diabetes and um, eventually realized that the environment that these individuals work on and um, and the, the type of diets that they are following weren't very healthy, which obviously immediately flagged a risk for, for diabetes, hypertension. So immediately identifying those triggers one can then say, let's do a wellness day where we can have these tests done. A finger prick test, let's check your glucose, let's check your cholesterol, let's look at your BMI. And while the nurses are at this wellness day, they will then advise these individuals based on the test results, what is a better step to take. So again, and I, I always mention it, but I, I'm very passionate about the duty of care of the employer. So the employer is actually not now bringing a professional to the, the workplace, um, such as a wellness day, where these individuals can get these simple tests done that can prevent something bigger happening. And heeding the warning and listening to the test results, putting measures in place then to say, well, how can we take this wellness day further now? Again, we're not ticking a box. We want to make sure that the well-being of these staff are actually being measured, being managed. And then saying, um, so such as Dr. Um, uh, Marty, to give some dietary advice. What are good um, uh, tips that these individuals can follow? How can HR get involved with it? So that's one scenario. So you can pick up trends from um, the, the risk management reports that we do for our employers. They would also sometimes feel that they would like to run a specific um, campaign for a day or for a month with the employees. And these are all customizable. So really, really depending on what is the need, what is the trend that's showing, and what is that little risk that's popping its head out that we'd like to get under control. And I mean, with that, obviously, um, putting this in place, you've got a healthy employee group and a happy employee group. Absolutely. Marty, is, is there anything you want to add there? No, I completely agree. Um, happy workforce is a productive workforce. Um, so uh, it used to be neglected previously. You know, wellness wasn't one of the top priorities. Um, often in mining, it was legislated, so it was just done, tick but it wasn't really, you know, followed. But nowadays, there's so much you can do and you can offer, like Marsha said, you know, to the people um, that you can really make a difference. Mm. Like I said, happy employee, happy workforce. Talking about the happy or positive uh, outcomes, what have been some of the positive outcomes that you've experienced out of the, the wellness days? From my side and my experience, definitely employees that feel that they are being taken care of, 
first of all. Um, everybody loves, you know, a, 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 you know a, a, a occasion where a provider comes through to them, looking after them and um, contributing to their own personal health. So it definitely creates a sense of morale, um, heightened positivity, um, and doing these tests and giving the results and having a backup plan um, lessens absenteeism. So it really becomes a, a fantastic way that doesn't always have to be expensive, even if it's just sharing information like where we are now and what we spoke before about flu. What do I do? Um, should I always go for a test? Shouldn't I? What are the, the trends that we have to look at? And just getting a professional to come speak to the employees. So it definitely creates a lot more information and education so that people can make more informed decisions. And then for the employer, definitely lessen absenteeism and more productivity because people are now informed and they know what to do with triggers that they normally knew, not would have known about. Mm. Right. Marty, uh, do you have any uh, 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 things to share about some sort of positive changes that have come out of well day, wellness days over and above what Marcia said? Well, one thing that I could add, you know, she, she definitely touched the most important points there. But um, one thing that I could add is maybe um, many companies are rurally located and the employees do not always have access to, um, I want to say, reliable healthcare or trustworthy sources, um, maybe not even to Google, uh, you know, we turn to it very quickly. But wellness days and then employee wellness programs create this opportunity to enable your workforce who might not otherwise have access to these sources to then take responsibility for their own health. And I think that is what um, employee wellness programs can really do. Wow. I just want to say to anybody watching at home, please, uh, if you've got any questions for um, Marty or Masia tonight, please drop them into the comment section and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, around employee well-being, around wellness days, um, basically on our discussion. And if you're just joining us, we're joined by Marty and Masia from Agility Agri discussing the importance of employee wellness days or employee well wellness programs within the agri sector. And um, so just to sum up our conversation, Marty and Marcia, I just want to know, and especially just as a farmer, as an entrepreneur, um, I mean, we're faced under a lot of pressure. Just personally, I think as, from a farm, as a farm owner and obviously as a business person, farming is not the most easiest sector to be in. And so there's a lot of pressure and demands um, just running the farm at the end of the day and just managing it as a business because, you know, under these tough, tough economic climatic conditions, um, it's quite, it can get quite stressful for uh, business owners or farm owners to say. But even going back to the employees as well, still we are in a global pandemic. A lot of communities are facing a lot of poverty, uh, pressures with service delivery, et cetera. And that could definitely affect the psyche and well-being of, 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 of farm workers. So what can we all do as people and professionals within the agri-sector um, to ensure the well-being of not only the farm workers, farm owners, but just ourselves and individuals. And I forgot to say, actually, just not focusing on the farms, it's also professionals like yourselves, because you guys are servicing the agri-industry. And if your clients, Marcy, I'm sure you might, att might attest to this, if your clients are stressed, in essence, you will also be stressed because you know that you know, you're servicing a clientele that's quite stressed, that's got extreme pressures and demands from all forces. So what can we all do as individuals, as professionals in the agri-sector to ensure that not only our physical health, but also our mental health is taken care of, especially in such tough economic times? So I'll start with that. Marcia will have lots to add, probably. <laughs> so um, obviously, um, your own wellness and healthy lifestyle and um, your mental health, that is important. So if you aren't healthy, you can't help other people. You can't help your family. Um, and you actually create make a more negative environment at work. So 
you know, we all know the healthy habits, you know, and more exercise, uh, more vegetables, um, add a little bit of vitamins there, lots of water. Um, so preferably not smoking, less alcohol. <laughs> so those are the harder ones. Um, but uh, following a healthy lifestyle will be um, very good for you. And then I think how we support other people is to be understanding um, and to be aware of other people's problems. You don't have to be the one to fix it, but you could know someone or something that could help them. Um, and being supportive and understanding will create this environment where people might, um, to promote help-seeking behavior. So just having the service of maybe a nurse on call or a psychosocial helpline um, and promoting the use of that will actually help um, all the people around you. So yeah, that's from my side. Mm. I can definitely add to that and say, um, and what Dr. Marty said um, and what I've realized um, within my own position and role, as you said in Bali, is support. Support and understanding, having empathy that people are dealing with quite a lot of pressure that we normally wouldn't have dealt with all together in one basket. So having empathy, having understanding, and realizing as an individual that you're not alone in feeling how you are feeling. And if there are a psychological aspects coming up, which is very prevalent at the moment, um, if you look at the statistics of individuals suffering from depression now and having mental illness, and especially those that already suffered from mental illness, the escalation that it's gone to now um, within the pandemic that we've been in, but also the other stresses that come, um, it, it's it's that old saying, don't judge until you've walked in that person's shoes. And I think more than ever now, we need to be aware of it, that we are all dealing with some sort of stress and um, being empathetic, listening, understanding and having a little bit more patience can definitely help. Um, something that's perceived as a negative to actually be um, explained as what the reality is. And then going on to that, looking after ourselves physically can definitely help um, increase our energy levels. Um, so, you know, obviously it goes hand in hand. If you eat well, you've got more energy. If you've got energy, you feel more positive. So trying to always remind yourself that at the end of the day, it is still you fighting the battle with everybody around you. And the more we look after ourselves, the more we will be able to also look after others from a psychological and a physical perspective. Wow, thank you, Marcy. I mean, you know, as you're talking, it, it definitely hit home because um, sometimes I shy away from reading the news because of the terrible things that we read, especially in the farming sector. If it's not farm, um, farm murders this week, it's mm -hmm. hearing about a farmer who committed suicide because, you know, uh, maybe their, their, their farm just couldn't recover from drought, et cetera. And, you know, they're under financial stress. Um, yeah. So I think, and it's, it's topics that we really don't read, uh, um, uh, deeply dive into and really unpack. Um, and you're right, it can definitely get lonely, especially in the farming sector, um, over and above just uh, having a, a, a business in general. So I think what's so assuring to know from Agility Agri is that there is a support line, most importantly, a 24-hour support line. So, you know, members can obviously get that support to say if I'm feeling depressed or if I'm having anxiety, and I'm sure it could be happening amongst women farmers or women farm workers with all the farm work, uh, farm murders, etc. cetera, um, you know, and the violence that is happening. So it's great to hear that you're not only providing a service where, you know, we're just paying a monthly fee and then we're just, mm. you know, uh, contacting Agility Agri if we're sick or if we're not feeling well or if we want to um, design uh, uh, or come up with uh, wellness days, but you are there from, a, a, you know, just a call away to support um, just on any other things that are just triggering uh, the low productivity. But ladies, it's been fantastic speaking to you guys today. You know, you're just unraveling a lot of more things that we still need to do as a sector, being a community still, supporting each other still, and really attacking or, or tackling issues that are really important, not only from a, a workspace, but just making sure that we are all safe, 
We are all, um, you know, mentally fit to still come at work, to be productive, to take care of ourselves and just our working environment. So thank you, firstly, for the work that Agility Agri is doing in the sector. And uh, thank you guys for for your roles and your participation in the podcast today. You definitely did uh, um, educate me more on what your service offering uh, provides, uh, not only to farm owner, as myself, but most importantly, to, 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 to the workforce. It's been an absolute pleasure, Mbali, and um, know that we are there and always happy to, to chat to you and the audience um, with anything else that, that, that you would like us to, to unravel and support you with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Marty, uh, any last words? <laughs> no, no. All the best on the farms. Um, there's always challenges. <laughs> But I hope you all stay very healthy. <laughs> so yeah. all the best. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we've just come to the end of the show this evening and I was joined by Marcia and Marty from Agility Agri. If you missed it, tonight's conversation, please head on to our Facebook and our YouTube channel where you'll find uh, this video posted. And we didn't get any comments today. I think maybe you're just listening quite intently um, with um, all the things we've been unpacking. But I hope that the show today has been very educative and informative, most importantly, to you and anybody you know that is working within the agri sector and i think the, um, what i'd like to leave you with lastly is that you know if you're feeling down if uh, your mental health is just not improving and you're just noticing a common trend where um, nothing is making you happy definitely speak to someone even if it's not agility agri uh, or if you're not a member definitely speak to someone closest to you and if you need further uh, uh, support and especially for people working in the agri community i think a Agility Agri is a company that maybe you could reach out to, uh, whether it's Marcia or Omarty this evening. But uh, we'll put their link to their website on our show notes on YouTube. And um, I hope this uh, was quite uh, an eye-opener of the many, many challenges that we face in farming, over and above the positive stories that we always love to share. But thank you so much for tuning in, and I wish you a very, very good night. And uh, I will see you next week, Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Thank you.